so we are using the MVC yeah. with a few helpers and a few middlewares, but the base architecture is simply MVC close. So these are our routes. Um, these are my image upload. So we also even have the image upload functionality from MongoDB, but it's mostly local. We don't have but anything. But we do have this stuff. UI, visualized UI for uploading this. For uploading, yes. We will um, be doing some minimal UI. There's admin section, actually. So when you look in the routes, you can see the admin section. So these are for admin. They can upload images, products, and everything else. By the right, way, so I do have a question. Did you think of doing the admin panel directly using Flutter rather than Node.js. I don't know which one would be faster for you. It's Flutter, yeah. So I was thinking of doing it with Flutter. I was actually thinking of using Laravel for the entire back end, right? Because it offers the admin panel. But then we had less time and I had no time to learn Laravel on the go. So okay, right. um I had to use this. So I will be building the back end the um admin panel with Flutter. Uh, we could do that. We could actually do that as a web app, as a separate tutorial. Yeah, uh, that would, that would whatever, nice. speed up this process. That's uh, that's what I want right now. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, right now we don't have to build it, but we could. This is the um, good part of this because it's a tutorial, so <laughs> we could totally um, do the front end, <clears throat> right, and do the client side, the <laughs> customer side, without having to build an admin panel because yes. we're in test, right? Yes. So we have Postman. If I wanted to do admin stuff, I already have everything here. You can see the Postman. Yeah, I didn't see I have, that. yeah, so I could do all of the admin stuff in here. When I want to add a new product, I could do it from here. So this is basically like my admin panel, okay. right? So I could do everything there and then have it reflect on the um, client's app, right? Yeah. So, and then later we could then go ahead even the postman is part of the tutorial. Even when you look in the written tutorial, okay. there's a postman in there as well, explaining no, you how you could it works you could use the Flutter to do backend, but it doesn't have to be covered. Maybe in the tutorial yes. directly. It just, I mean, not in the video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, so, this would this would faster the process of everything. I mean, because you don't need to worry about so much extra things. But sometimes presenting exactly. on video may take a lot of time. And yeah. you have to take care of a lot of extra things because you don't know how the viewers or followers or the people that buy the or course work. they feel. True. So this is the front end. Yeah. Um, we're using Go mostly, Go router for okay. all navigation, okay. Go router. And we're also using uh, RiverPod okay, for right. the. We're using yeah. RiverPod for both state management and our interface adapter for the clean architecture. Okay. Uh, we're also using annotation and the generator okay. as well, as suggested by the documentation. Um, we've already built... So, But we are not using any package. frigid package, right? Any what? Freezed? Fr it's called frigid or frizzed package? There is a package freezed. for... I think it's freezed. Yeah, freezed. freezed. Okay. Yeah, that is what mostly every RiverPod person uses to generate their models. But we're not doing that because we are doing clean architecture. Okay. And in clean architecture, this is why I said robot is very anti-clean architecture because it tries to take over most of those. So freeze or take over generating models, but then you don't have control over them, right? Okay. So but then clean architecture suggests that we have an entity before yeah. we have the actual model. So okay. for example, I have the user feature over here, as you can see, and in there in the domain, I have entities and I have the user entity. Okay. Now, apart from the user entity, I also have the user model in the data folder, okay. in the data layer. So with freezed, I cannot do that. I will be forced to actually just have one um, entity, okay. right? And also I don't have I don't have much control over it. So even when I do this myself, when I write manually write the from map, I yeah. can manipulate how I want to even do composition, for okay, example. Right, right. This is a very great example, yeah. So oh, yeah, I the decomposition things, to... because the freezed packet that takes that away. Exactly. And so it generates the weird code that people don't from... understand what to do. Exactly. So this is even the from map, we're getting a, a map, yeah. uh, a map string dynamic, and from it, we're extracting some part of it and creating a separate 
entity altogether, not a user entity, an address model from the data from this map. Yeah. And we're incorporating that comp composition into our address, as you can see. So we have a composition here, but with freeze, that is very difficult to do. So we have all of those. We also so, have the by, by the way, so means. can we say that river pod is just not for clean architecture? Not really not for clean. I'd say it's not good as an interface adapter, okay. but it's good for state management. Okay. So for state management, yes. Um, button events and all that, um, changing the color and themes and everything, which is good. But then when you actually want to do interface adapter, which is using it as the connector from your data, from your domain layer to your presentation, layer, yeah. that connection. Yeah, when you need an inter interface adapter, you don't, you should not use Riverpod. It's not good for that. But we're going to do it and break Riverpod and do it because Riverpod gives us some flexibility to do that. So we do that. And we also have in the app, we have not just this. Let me start the app over and let's okay. get the onboarding screen as well. So we see everything from scratch. Okay. So. As you can see also in the app, we have different themes, dark and light theme. Wow, everything is so we are doing that. I didn't so, know yeah. that. Yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah this that. is cool. So we have dark and light everywhere on every page. Where yeah. We will automatically handle those as well. The yeah. theming automatically handled as well. So um, let's go all the way back to and remove all our cache and remove the first time key as well. So that we can restart. All right, so um, I'm trying to get my first time a key to be removed, but it's not going away. So that we can see the Oh, by the way, this uh, folder structure, does it still stay, do they still stay the same as block? Uh, they still stay the same as clean architecture. So, for example, auth. All oh, right, have I should have, should have said as the one that he used with block, All right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 it stays the same. But then the only difference is that we swapped out what we had block, now we have a report. That's the only difference. Oh, okay. So right. everything stays the same, we just swap out. This is why clean architecture is nice because you don't have to move things around a lot. So you just yeah. switch out a particular area and it doesn't affect the rest. So even if I change this to block, it doesn't affect any other layer, right? That's so, beautiful, right. Um, yeah. So I still have this over here. So I can't, for some reason, get my onboarding to come up, back up again. So maybe you can delete that. Back. Yeah, I have to delete the key, but I'm a Linux. I don't know why it's not deleting. So. I will check on that later. Oh, let me see. Okay, on Linux, when you say you are on Linux, but the simulator, uh, it doesn't yeah, look Yeah, it's like... not an Android simulator. It's I'm running it as a Linux app. You can see at the top, Linux desktop. All right. It's a desktop app. Okay. But I'm using device preview to make it have a frame. I can turn it off and it will zoom oh, in. This is like beautiful. That. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we have... Let me see, let me see. Yeah, so let's see the onboarding. Let me set the entire homepage to onboarding so that. So this way, I can also remove the redirect from Go Router and we can restart. Yes, yeah, so this is the onboarding. Um, we have this and we have that, but the second guy, where is he? So we have only two images on our onboarding. Um, okay. and are they from the design? Man, you can do it later. Just a rem reminder of that. No, don't worry. I've yeah. already done it. Okay. Uh, 10, 24. So we got that. Yeah, so this is the onboarding, and from there you go to the home page, to the login. And then we also have persistence, right? So we're using session tokens from from the Node.js side. Yeah. So we persist, we send tokens over here, and then we persist over, over here as well. Also, you can't log in on two devices at once. 
because the tokens work that way. I've made it so that you can't be in on two devices at once. So when you log out on one, it logs you out on the other one. So we're teaching how to do that as well because some people don't know how to do that. Right. right. So, um, yeah. So from there, let's go restart. From there, we have sign in. So I have an account already, I think. Uh, Or we could register for an account. I don't think I have an account yet. So this is the sign in, uh, sign up rather, the registration. You can do anything you want. But we have also authorization, authentication, everything. We can select a country. Um, Over here, you're supposed to see the flag, but because we're on Linux, so the font does not show the flags. But on Android, you will see the flags of each country. So you can search for a country, let's see, UK, and then we can see the country code, and then you enter your number, and it automatically formats your number for you, automatic formatting. And we could also, United States, we also have automatic formatting for these ones as well. So also, it doesn't let you enter more than or less than. Also, it doesn't let you enter numbers, sorry, Mm -hmm. letters, only numbers. Um, what else? What else have we got? Um, we could go back to sign in, we could go to forgot password, and from here, we could. I think I have client, was it mobile? Max, let me check. I think I have some fake emails that I've set up already. So that's authentication all done and ready. After that, you could go ahead and reset your password. Otherwise, you could go ahead and log in. So I think I have client test okay. at Max. It's okay as long as we can log um, in now. Yeah, and we also what's my password? I think it's one two three four five. Ash, what is it? Yeah. So it t- it took me back to my onboarding. Yeah. That is because I haven't built the home screen yet. Oh, okay. I didn't build the home screen yet. So um, after that, it should take you to the home screen. But for now, I'm linking it back to the onboarding. Yeah, so okay. now I've got the home screen to build, and that's yes. it. After building the home screen, we've got the profile and then the cart. Then we're done. Okay, right. Right. Um, since I most of this week was me figuring out how to force RiverPod to bend to clean architecture, but since I've already figured that out, most of it will just be repetition, so it shouldn't take long. So I think, uh, let's see how many features I have. So it's it's product categories, admin auth. So let's see, I've already completed user auth, and I'm now working on, where is it, home. Home w- works with products and cart. So... I should probably be done with two. One, two, three. No, not three. Two, three, four. So I should be done with all of those by next week. Next week, Saturday. Pending oh. reviews and admin. Okay, so apart from admin and reviews, it would be done pretty much. Yes, and also, sorry, check out. That's orders. Mm. Adding an order, checking out and all that. Okay, so, right. So, so okay, that, that, that's great. So then for the back end, we are building an app rather than a web app or mobile app. Uh, yes, we're building. We might actually make it an, a web app with Flutter. But okay. then if we do that, that should be a different tutorial. Uh, or do you want it to be part of this one? Uh, so for that one, you might use just MVC architecture. It's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. This is enough uh, clean architecture, and uh, yeah, it does have a lot of bipolar code. Yeah, a lot of it. Okay. Right. Well, for beginners, what did you suggest that how to go ahead directly from clean architecture with, or with this course? Yeah. Or just general advice. Uh, just beginners. general advice. Uh, I don't think clean architecture should be the first thing. They should because if you're a beginner, you're probably going to be working on smaller projects. Yeah. And clean architecture is not good for smaller projects because it's it's doing too much. If it's it's too much, actually, so it doesn't make sense for. What it helps 
um, with is in bigger projects, first of all, it helps with the separation of concerns. So when something goes wrong, you know exactly where to look for or mm -hmm. exactly where to touch. Also, it helps with uh, the, again, the separation of concern, again, helps with how you, the modulation of your code, how everything is separate. So the presentation or when you're swapping out things, for example, when we swap out our state management, yeah. our interface adapter, yeah. It easily you can easily swap it out without messing with your talking to your server or something like that. Okay. We can also swap out how we're talking to the server. For example, in this particular course, we're going to be swapping out both DO and DO um, client with ATTP client, both of them. So we can also see how we can use both of them in the same project while swapping them in and out without okay. messing up the entire structure. Yeah. So, but then. If you're a beginner, you're probably not going to be doing those advanced stuff. So yeah, yeah just go with smaller. Uh, by the way, uh, with here you're also going with the Go router, but with the block plane architecture, I don't think you used any router. I used the um, basic floss navigator. Yeah, but where are you moving away from that? Router out of it. Yes. I mean, my question: Why are you moving away from that? You are using Go router. Oh, it, I, I don't know. I was just doing it because I started using Go Router a lot lately. Oh, okay. So for mostly building web apps. Okay. So I just find it interesting okay. because of how it's declarative approach. It helps you do all of that. So on a browser, when we run this on a browser, we can easily see the forward slash forgot password. Also, we can pass it. I mean, um, the... But this is actually the same as GetX Router. The writing better. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then what I'm trying to say is um, Flutter's basic navigator, the one I use for the block tutorial, yeah. is actually a lot better than this, in uh, my experience. Yes, I personally feel like that, as well as it's a package, so that's why I yeah. don't want to use it. <laughs> exactly. It's also a package. That's another problem with it. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, nah, but I know a lot of Riverport yeah. guys that go ahead with Go Router. It, they just feel like go it's a good match. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think so. As because well. for so me, a lot I of time, if I that. can avoid learning something new and it still does the job, I I don't learn it. One reason why I went with Go Router for this particular one is the bottom nav bar. Yeah. So you can see with those nested nav, we're gonna have nested navigation. So when you go to one bar in the bot, one tab in the bottom nav, mm -hmm. in there you're going to be navigating it into deeper screens. So we did something like that for the block architecture. Yeah. And I had to build my own um, shell, my own navigation shell. If you go check the block tutorial, we had to build our own navigation shell. So yeah. but over here, Go Router already has something called a shell route. Okay. Right. This is it, a shell route. And so it's easier. So this is why I actually want. So whenever I see that bottom nav, yeah. I either go ahead and build my own shell router or okay. I go with Go Router because it gives you access to that. All right. Okay. That yeah, is so the only reason why I'm using it here. So basically, for nested routing. Yes. 